Right, it's the 11th of January 2009 and I'm just going to do a recording um, of one of my family tree research trips to Shaftesbury where a number of uh, Daisy Amber, Harry and Sandy's ancestors were um, baptised, um, sometimes married and sometimes buried. Now I've put this under Brockway because for quite a long time over the past year we've not known who Hester was, who her or what her maiden name was. I only discovered this recently and it's the Brockway family and a, a lot of them lived in Compton Abbas but they frequently got married at um, St Peter's Shaftesbury and so they would be um, you know known in that area probably because it's only just up the road from Compton Abbas so this tape is um, going to be put under Brockway and I should probably also place it under other names um, linked as well I mean there's there's um Sharps for example but I'm not quite sure where exactly uh, everyone's been um, baptized married and buried uh, I've got it all written down of course but anyway here we go this is Sheila arriving in Shaftesbury to do her family tree scanning um, for the Brockways the Bastables the Mirfields, oh lots of names this is what looks to be the, the main church but it's actually not a church anymore it's been turned into some sort of Trinity Centre or something Trinity Centre, can have a look inside in a minute yeah, when I first got there, I managed to find a car park that wasn't too expensive, and I also went to Holy Trinity Church, um, which is no longer functional as a church, um, but it had a very large graveyard. And um, and then I, I went off to um, St. Peter's Church in the, in the town, which didn't have any visible graveyard at all. It's all been built up round. Um, and later I wandered around, and I went up to... Um, the town council cemetery where I found some Beelings actually and some Mirfields. Further wandering took me on to a Roman Catholic church and a, another disused church which is now a school and then going down a little country lane um, near Gold Hill where the famous Hovist advert was made wandering around I found St James's. Anyway this will all be located on the tape recording just a little summary to start. And there's lots of car park and what, what, uh, and what was once the graveyard, but there's still a lot of graves. Let me just take a picture of the church. I think I can see another church over the top of a roof. But I'll do this one first and make my way over to the other one. I've put a two hour ticket on the car, it's only a pound for two hours. If necessary, I'll go back. And uh, put some more, if I need some more time. Right, so I'm wandering around. It was obviously a very big graveyard once here. Massively cleared up, but there are some very large stones still remaining. But massively cleared up, this is. I have to walk amongst the bushes for the one or two that remain. In memory of John Cole, born April the 19th, looks like 1777. Um, buried 1837, and Martha, his wife, that's an old one. It's one of the few that was sticking up at the ground. As we know, some of the, I think, I think it was a feeling, it was buried at Shaftesbury born in Gillingham and his wife but it could be in the other graveyard if there is one I'm just having a general look around it seems weird the church has been turned into an office um, this was obviously a massive graveyard once so here I am in Shaftesbury looking for Sandy, Daisy, Harry and Amber's ancestors that lived here once that stem from the Beelings. I can't remember all the names off the top of my head because um, 
I haven't got any bit of paper with me, but the names will come to light as things go on. I found some propped up against the wall I'm just going to have a look at. Of course, I never knew about the Brockways or lots of other names when I visited in June of 2008. I've done a great deal of research since and lots and lots of names have surfacing. This was my first visit and I do intend going back because of all the information I've recently discovered. Sacred in the memory of it's like Jesse Target and Mary. It's an unusual name. And that's another thing. It's always a good idea when I'm doing my first visits to scan quite a few graves, even though they don't seem linked, because later on you'll be surprised what surfaces. As I discovered, um, a grave that I'd, I'd um, taken a photo of at Mockham turned out to be related. Um, so it's always you know, useful to, to uh, make note of other graves because you never know when they might be a useful reference in the future. There's one that's been embedded into the wall of a Pickett. Somebody Pickett, John Pickett, who died in 1763. That's an old one. And they've actually put, turned some of this into a car park. So everywhere I'm walking now is just empty of gravestones. Just once, and there still are people buried underneath. The old one or two stones. Propped up against a wall or so emerging. I know further over there's a lot more. I'm going over there in a minute. Who's this? In memory of Mary Peach. She died in 1868, age 82. Oh, Trinity Centre is day services for older people. So that's what that church has been turned into. I'm now going to try and find the other one. Yeah, yeah sometimes it's um, rather than the church fall into decay it's better to make natural use for it really so right, I'm in the oldest church Anglo-Saxon church in Shaftesbury and um, it's, uh, it looks quite modern inside actually this is St Peter's church Shaftesbury um, where many of the Brockways were baptised and married. So, and all this has come to surface recently. Very open. It's called St Peter's. Right, I've just found directions to the cemetery. Which is on the outskirts a bit. It's not really far, but it's the fact that I only put two hours on the the van. It must be getting on for... Oh, I don't know what the time is. I, can't, I think I, I was okay there till 12. So I might have to make my way back in a minute and drive up here. Right, I've arrived at the cemetery. There's plenty of parking, but it's not very big. This is another field. So basically, I'll just do a scan and make my way back. Remember, they've only got an hour and I've got a lie. quarter of an hour to get back to the van. So here we go, scanning. Right, I'm in the Shaftesbury Main Cemetery and I've come across a, a gravestone, like an open book, hidden up in memory of my dear husband George Budden, who died 1962, age 56, and Gwendolyn H. Budden, who died 1993, age 94. So that's a Budden. There's not an awful lot. I haven't found anything. I've been very good at finding anything here so far, anyway. No, I can't seem to locate anybody at the moment. A bit paranoid. I feel a bit paranoid at the moment. There's people staring at me. 
that happens sometimes. And they see me talking to myself into my tape recorder. It's only button one I can find anyway. Yeah, I've just found another I've just found one. Um I never have in memory of A. De Emily Beeling, who passed me through away September the 21st, 1944 69. And then on there they've got Arthur Broomfield, 1895 to 1886, and Lillian Broomfield, 1896 and 1890, and Gus Beeling, 1880, 1895 to 1977. Next door we've got, I never have in memory of Emily Jane Beeling, who passed me through August the 5th, 1944-78. Also, Augustus James Beeling. I remember seeing him in the census. He died the 31st of July, 1958, age 89. And then there's another stone on the top to the memory of Myrtle Olive, who fell asleep on January the 13th, 1971. And her dearly loved husband, Edward Lionel Davitt fell asleep January the 17th, 1965. Daughter and son-in-law of Augustus and Amelia Beeling. Oh, I found a Mirfield. Sydney John Mirfield, 27th of January, 1938, age 20. And Louisa Gertrude Mirfield, 29th of January, 1970, age 86. She'll be in the um, census. Sydney John Mirfield. Yeah, on the um, Beeling grave, a kind old gentleman clipped it, clipped the weeds. It had been mowed over the top.